Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're gonna to be talking about the new album from Mac DeMarco, titled Salad Days. You know, one of the biggest tropes in comedy is observational humor. You all know this stuff. The material that fills the acts of the late George Carlin, Jerry Seinfeld, and Louis C.K., amongst dozens of others. The moment-by-moment -moment notes about the little things in life that are quirky or odd or seem out of place until you start thinking about them. The things that might seem inessential on the surface until you dig into the reasons why we do them. And this sort of observational style that mostly shows up in comedy also shows up in other art as well for obvious reasons observing the normal world around you allows outlets to create plenty of interesting stories and more importantly implying depth in said stories can take elements that everyone can relate to and make them seem a lot bigger and more important than they really are. And I gotta be honest, with few exceptions, the sort of music that primarily works through observational commentary doesn't do a lot for me, especially if the tone of said music is more muted and mundane and actively seems to avoid drama. Sure, it's often effective in creating atmosphere and critics will eat this material up for its immersive factor and its relatability, but music that coasts by on mellow observations just doesn't interest me whatsoever, especially when the insights that it presents aren't remotely revelatory. And that's not saying music about suburban or rural life can't be interesting, far from it. Arcade Fire, Lord, Sun Kill Moon, and the whole slew of country albums, hell, most of the country genre, have proven that wrong time and time again. But a slice of that sort of life without deeper commentary or insight often for me just comes across as small-minded, bland, and rather pretentious when you break it down. And really, that was my first reaction when listening to Canadian singer-songwriter Mac DeMarco's debut album 2. An album that I don't really dislike or even think is all that bad, but it nearly puts me to sleep every single time I listen to it. Which, for the record, is not a good thing. Sure, the melodic progressions were interesting and the production was actually pretty damn good, but with the two smooth guitar tones, DeMarco's half-stone delivery, even though he, he swears he's never smoked one, and the lyrics that had some decent, if underwritten text, but sparse subtext on suburban life, look, I just could not get invested in that album. It might not strictly be in the white guy with acoustic guitar subgenre, but the tone and delivery of that album definitely fell into the category of trying to come across as having depth when there really wasn't much there, either through his delivery or through the lyrics. So, okay, with all that in mind, why the hell did I pick up his follow-up album, Salad Days? <laughs> well, call it curiosity if you want, because Buzz was suggesting that this was going to be at the album where the laid-back bro dude grows up. Now, this was the same defense that I heard used for the new real estate album. But given DeMarco's taste for weird melody lines, I had the hope that something on this record would actually be able to grip me. Was I right? Uh... It's okay, I guess. At this point, I'm fairly certain I can make the judgment that Mac DeMarco, you know what, he's just not for me. It's not my kind of music. But you know what, even evaluating it outside of my own biases to, and for this brand of lightweight indie rock, I don't really think that Salad Days works. Now, I'm not going to say it's bad, because it's not, but when viewed as a cohesive whole, or hell, on a similar note, as the flip side of the coin to his debut album, Salad Days really doesn't hold up all that well. And really, viewing it as a companion piece to that first album makes a fair bit of sense because Mac DeMarco really hasn't innovated much in terms of his sound between albums. If anything, his melodies have simplified or at least become less experimentally jarring. And you know, I didn't mind that as, as a more conventional songwriting structure does sort of fit the thematic element of normalcy that he's trying to cultivate. And there are still plenty of the elements that make DeMarco an, an interesting instrumentalist. The guitar strumming has some texture, the syncopation between the bass and the guitar, that is impressive, and the production is still really good at picking up whatever texture it can glean from the smoother guitar tones. On the other hand, as if to balance out the muted organ undertones on a couple tracks, he interjects these synth lines that sound imported from a late 70s cheap synthesizer on songs like Passing Out Pieces, and Chamber of Reflection, and it's a really unflattering clash between them and the guitar lines. I'm guessing it was trying to sound a little bit more quaint and normal, but honestly, it sounds chintzy and a little cheap. And while some of the songs go for a more somber vibe, it's hard to shake the overall mellowness of this record that does really dampen any emotion I might feel 
one way or the other. Now that somberness is the element that likely most characterizes Salad Days, as it takes some of the dark undercurrents that hid between the lines on two and moves them to the forefront with DeMarco's trademark brand of honesty and weariness. And this definitely shows up in the lyrics, which are have more than a few songs about heartbreak and loss and moving on, especially when you have the knowledge that the relationship is just doomed from the start on songs like Let Her Go, which might be an odd fit for more of an upbeat song, but it works here mostly by focusing on the time spent together than on the separation. Honestly, I think the song is one of the better ones on the album. And there are moments in the songwriting that I thought had some really fun or interesting commentary, most notably on the song targeting alpha bro masculine posturing in Blue Boy, which I just thought was a hilarious song. Unfortunately, a significant portion of this album is also occupied with larger commentary on the underlying bleakness of mundane, suburban, ordinary life. Starting early on the title track with, with lines like, right now another year off and casually resign, or let's put it in better words, quit these pretentious things and just punch the clock, right? Okay, look, I'm not gonna compare Mac DeMarco to his critically acclaimed Canadian counterparts, but you know what? A look at Arcade Fire's masterpiece album, The Suburbs from 2010, only highlights the bigger problems with Mac DeMarco's commentary on normal life, most of which begins in the framing. As much as his listless inertia is captured in his vocal delivery, there's an underlying sourness in songs like Brother, which really did bother me, which attacks the whole 9 to 5 lifestyle from an outside vantage point. And look, you're not going to find a harsher critic of that particular lifestyle than me, but by placing himself outside of the situation as an outsider speaking inwards, you lose some of the empathy for DeMarco and, and his position. And then you have Goodbye Weekend, which furthers this problem, which seems to act as a bit of a response to Brother, but it comes across as willfully ignorant and not willing to hear about better possibilities, however they were, adv however they were advised. It almost goes on the line as you can keep talking, but you're wasting your time. And yet even that level level of commentary, it's paper thin and lacking in the lyrical detail to really stand out for me. A problem I think of which DeMarco is somewhat aware, as he says on Passing Out Pieces, hell of a story, oh, is it boring? But that song comes across as a little weirdly defensive as he tries to articulate that he's he's giving of himself by telling these stories and being on the road and being an artist and goddamn what everyone else thinks. And you know, to be fair, with the right delivery, that could have worked. But this is where we come to the my big issue with the album. And the frustrating thing is, you know, I get what Mac DeMarco was going for, and there are points where it kind of works. But he is such an inert presence on this album. If the instrumentation hadn't already dampened your feelings, DeMarco's delivery completely squelches any emotion or empathy that I might have towards his material into this soft middle ground. And you know what? It makes sense. If he's looking to evoke imagery of the sullen bleakness of middle America, he does a good job. But it's also a curse in that it really neuters any strong emotional attachment that I would have towards that sort of material. On top of that, his falsetto and upper range is along the lines of Mark Foster just being damn close to unbearable for me. I can't listen to it at all. Personal preference, I know it's it's my issue with his voice, but you know what? It doesn't exactly help him here. And you know what? If he wants to coast by on just middle America somberness, call it might sound realistic, but that doesn't mean I want to hear it. <sighs> Look, I get DeMarco's appeal and I get his relatability. And with this album, I've just come to the conclusion that it just doesn't relate to me in the same way. Don't get me wrong. There's a ways to work in little emotions and mellowness, or even reveal the darkness and existential emptiness beneath said mellowness. But DeMarco, in my opinion, does not nail it here. His material is still consistently underwritten. His honesty is compelling until you realize that he's not really saying anything all that potent or interesting or revealing of himself. And his presentation is so so inert to even sell those little emotions and making them feel like they matter more than they do. And on this album, that doesn't happen. That being said, I can't even get all that worked up about this album, mostly because the instrumentation is mostly solid and there are snippets of wit in some of the lyrics that I did like. So overall, with the acknowledgement that this guy is just isn't for me and it, this album might work better presented to a different audience, I'm gonna give this album a six out of 10 and only a recommendation if for some reason this review made you curious. And as for mellowness, concealing depth, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna say something controversial. I'm gonna stick with Jimmy Buffett. The man might be silly, 
completely lack dignity and have written some utterly ridiculous songs cheeseburger in paradise anyone but you know what with songs like margaritaville and a pirate looks at 40 they actually put they actually had some real dramatic weight to them and i'll i'll take them any day at least over this <sighs> so yeah thanks a lot for watching if you'd like to like and subscribe i'd be more than grateful if there's any other albums coming out that you'd like me to take a look at or if there's anything i might be able to do to improve my presentation i'm more than happy to hear about it so until then i'm mark and i'll see you next time